Well, good afternoon, and welcome to the Idahoan Show. You know, I've been intending for some time to do some terminal ballistics testing on some loads for my 44 and possibly other guns, uh, but I've sort of been hindered in that regard by the cost of ballistic gelatin or raw meat, for that matter. Um, actually, cheap steak is about the same price per unit volume as ballistic gelatin. Uh, you know, the gelatin itself is about $20 a pound, but then you mix it with uh, water uh, to form the gelatin that you shoot. But anyway, uh, what I ended up doing is I made some initial tests on actual ballistic gelatin and on actual steak to get a baseline for some standard loads, you know, to know how they would perform. And then, using that data as a point of comparison, I've been doing a lot of experimentation to see if I can come up with a cheaper alternative to uh, shooting ballistic gelatin or, or actual raw meat. And I've found that a composition of 35 parts cornstarch to 100 parts water by mass, cooked until it polymerizes, actually makes a very suitable substitute for ballistic gelatin. Uh, and so that's what I thought I would demonstrate today, is the process for making this uh, alternative ballistic gelatin, uh, and then we'll maybe take a, piece out of, uh, take a piece of it out to the range and shoot it for you as well. Now, like I said, it's 35 parts uh, cornstarch to 100 parts water by mass, but if you do the density calculations, it actually works out to almost exactly one to two uh, parts by volume. So one cup starch to two cups water, multiply that by whatever scaling factor you need in order to get the volume of, of target compound that you want. So you can see there the viscosity is increasing. You know, that's a sign our polymerization reaction is taking place.
at this point that's getting too viscous for the mixer to really be effective so I'll continue stirring it by hand a little bit ideally if you can see how some of that is turning from creamy white to sort of a translucent color I uh, ideally we want to get it all as translucent as possible because that in signifies that the polymerization is essentially complete So I don't know how well you can see the difference on the camera, but a lot of that is now looking fairly translucent. So I think we're ready to take it off the stove and pack it into a form. I typically just use a, a little uh, bread pan for a form and then cut it into blocks once it hardens. So now I'll just put that in the refrigerator and let it cool overnight. So now these have had a chance to cool in the refrigerator overnight. We just dump them out of the forms. We get these blocks or loaves of alternative ballistic gelatin. Um, you know, mechanically, the only difference between this stuff and actual ballistic gelatin is that this does have a little bit lower elastic uh, limit, which actually works to our advantage because uh, when you're shooting a, a block of material like this, Typically what you see is there'll be um, an initial section of the, the bullet hole which is much larger than the diameter of the bullet. You know, this is the section where the bullet is moving fairly fast, it's depositing a lot of its kinetic energy uh, and producing a lot of collateral damage in the material. And then there's a fairly abrupt transition point after which the the hole that the bullet makes is just the size of the bullet diameter um, you know after it's slowed down a little and it's it's not creating so much collateral damage now with actual ballistic gelatin because it's so elastic uh, the the large part of the wound channel will often collapse back in on itself and you know you can still tell the difference but you have to examine the block fairly closely to determine you know where that transition point is you know how large the the initial wound channel was uh, with this stuff it because it's not so elastic it's pretty easy to tell uh, how big the wound channel is and and oftentimes in that initial period of high collateral damage the blocks will actually break open um, so it's, it's very easy to measure the, the depth of that initial penetration. But anyway, what I'm going to do is take these blocks and cut them in half. And then in use, what I do is I'll take a whole bunch of these and just stack them up you know, next to each other until I get whatever depth of uh, penetration I need or, or a little extra. So as you can see, I've stacked up those blocks of alternative ballistic gelatin and this wooden channel to keep them in a straight line. Now we'll go ahead and shoot them.
Well, that was actually uh, an especially hot load that I'd loaded up for grizzly bear defense, and it went clean through all six blocks, about 18 inches of that. I guess we needed to, to cast a few more blocks if we wanted to catch the bullet. But anyway, you see how the stuff works. Here are some 44 caliber projectiles that I was able to capture in the alternative ballistic gelatin in earlier tests. So hopefully you found the video useful. Uh, I know I've certainly found this alternative ballistic gelatin useful. Uh, after all, you know, actual ballistic gelatin costs anywhere from $15 to $20 a pound, whereas cornstarch is less than a dollar a pound. So there's a very significant cost savings in uh, using this stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching the Idahoan Show.